Thank you for joining us at the High Academy. I'm Rabbi Sachs, and I applaud your quest and uh, your thirst for knowledge. You know, it, it is actually my philosophy is that we have to learn something new every day. You know, I try to learn something new every single day, and I... Um, and I, I recognize it, you know, I, I say, okay, so this is, uh, mm, I never knew this, and put it in my memory bank, which I immediately forget. Um, so so um, the, the discussion we, we, we've been having lately in each class is self-contained, was that why would God want a temple, whether it was in the desert or it is, it is in Jerusalem, and why on earth did he choose these artifacts, a table, an ark, an altar, a menorah, what, what, what was it? What was, uh, what did he want these for? Remember, he had no use for them personally. And um, what lessons do they convey? And they must convey lessons because if it's in the Torah, if God designed them as he did, uh, remember, this is not, an, an architect saying, hmm, I like this, and let me add a little bit of, you know, let me cantilever, nothing like that. It was God giving the exact measurements to the fraction. One and a half, you know, uh, in, in a certain measurement, the height, and one and a half, and it, it, it was just so detailed, so detailed. And um, because God wanted it a certain way. So yesterday's class, the previous class, we discussed was the table. Right? The table was extremely narrow, but long, have plenty of guests, but be less extravagant. The table is where the family sits together and it enjoys um, each other's company. The table is also Friday nights, is sacrosanct, the Shabbos, you know, and the table is also, you know, make, make family dinners um, during the week. And parents do their best you know, one or two nights a week. Sit with your kids, please. Um, invite friends, invite family, um, and, and on and on and on. So that, that was the, the basic class yesterday. And you can see the class, the highcenter.com forward slash academy. It's on ethics and beliefs, and it's God's artifacts, the table. Today's class is God's artifacts, the ark. So what on earth is an ark? Because we know about Noah's ark. We know Noah's ark was a huge boat. Um, this is called the same word, right? In some places, other places it's called Aron, which is which means ark, <laughs> which means um, yeah, ho ho holy ark. But the idea the idea is that the boat Noah's boat was a receptacle that saves people from drowning, from harm. The Ark contained the tablets, the broken and the fixed. You know, the, Moses broke the first set of tablets, then, then the second, ta second ta set of tablets, and they were placed in the Ark, teaching us that the, 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 the tablets, the instructions, the Decalogue, the principles, the sayings, the commandments, if you will, um, literally are what will save mankind. So, so the Ten Commandments, or as I call them, the Ten Principles, are, are so fundamental. And it's, it's really not for God, but rather it's for us. I'm going to throw one out there. Um, Honor your parents. Right? If children are not taught to honor their parents, if children are not taught to honor their teachers, children are not taught to honor authorities, then you have a a a a, a movement that see, seeks to strip power from parents, from police, from from judges, from teachers, and making them, you know. A, a, emasculating their, their, their authority. And that's just one example, but each one of the Decalogue, this is not a class on the Decalogue, but each one of the Ten Commandments are basically a protection 
of how to keep society that it doesn't crumble. You know, most most societies, by the way, um, last 250 years. After 250 years, it seems to crumble. Immorality um, descends and wreaks havoc, and then that society is over and done with. If people kept the Decalogue, maybe it didn't have to crumble the way it did. So the Ark is, is a, a protection, the, the, what's sitting in the Ark. By the way, in the Ark was the, the Ten Commandments, was the very Torah that Moses wrote, was the jar of manna that was, that was kept for posterity, and a couple other things. But all these are, are, are serious teachings of how to, how to recognize that there are things beyond your ego, things beyond yourself, and, and how, to, how, how to maximize your potential and how to be a better person. So that's the first thing. It, it's, a, it's an ark. It's a receptacle that saves. If, if you look at the way the ark was made, was was um it, it was it was it was a box in a box in a box and site tightly sealed and you know the 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 tablets went in now the purpose of putting it in a box is to protect it when you put something in a box you know think of a mover so you you wrap up your 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 uh, your stuff and you put them in a box and the box is taken you don't you don't take you don't take these uh, the, the you know the picture frames that you have and place them in the moving truck or maybe you do but i don't and and but what do you do you know you wrap them up place them in a box you take the next thing place them in a box you cut right place them in a box etc etc and and um and and the, the box is designed to to to, uh, to as a as a protection that things don't break. So we discussed protection, but this is a different type of protection that I want to posit. The the um, morality has to be protected. It must be protected. Values have to be protected. It shouldn't be subject. It shouldn't be subject. So you know, to 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 change like this, right? That we have morals, deep seated, rooted morals, and then we can change them on a whim. You know, I think I think of the Constitution as a moral document, for example. To change the Constitution is difficult, right? To create an amendment is difficult. But to, to take a, a line out of the Constitution is, is, you know, is so difficult because it was it was written with great humility and great sense of morality. So the Constitution is protected. The Torah, the Ten Commandments, also not only does it protect, but it must be protected. You know, I always say it's the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Options not the ten choices. These are, are, are things that have to be protected at all costs. And then they will protect you. So the, the, the um, so you cannot, you know, society, now, society does change, society does evolve, society does adapt. There's no question. And, and thank God, you know, I, I, I think of the, the, um, the, 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 you know the the change, the civil rights change, and the civil rights, you know, fight for freedom, etc. So it was immoral. Enough people stood up, and and changed that, and changed that. So there is room to change things, but I, I believe the caveat is, if it was immoral, then at the outset, but morality. I'm not talking about acceptance. I'm not talking because that. When none of us are God's jur judge, jury, and executioner, you know, I, I always tell people, "I why did this happen? Why did that? Why would God do this?" And I always give people the same answer: I am in sales. I'm not in management. So when God 
says something, it's in the Torah, right? It's because God knows best. You know, you ever heard something mother knows best? God knows best. And 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 society should not fool around as a society. I'm not talking individuals. Individuals, you know, is is is, is something else. I'm not gonna condemn an individual. I may I think about this by the way. I myself pray three times a day. One of the prayers that I recite is Salachno, please God, forgive me. I, I, I'm I'm human and I err and I'm 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 you know, I, I could be a hypocrite at times. I, I you know, I could be unjust and I so forgive me. I ask you. I'll do the best I can, but I'm asking you to to, to forgive me. So if I can ask forgiveness for myself for my foolish or not so foolish errors, my, my, my deviousness, my, my paranoia, and I ask God for forgiveness each and every day, how can I judge somebody else? Maybe they ask God for forgiveness. They don't need to ask it of me. So I'm not, I will, I refuse to condemn any individual, unless you're a Farrakhan, you know, then I'll condemn you, you know, and, you know, and, and unless you're a um, Ilan Omar, then, you know, you, you're finished in my books. But that, as individuals, that's because you represent too much. Um, the, the, um, but I, I'm talking about, and, uh, you know, I, uh, it, it's, you got to protect morality as a society, as a whole. You just have to, you have to protect it. And it's not so simple. You know, in, in, in the seven Noahide universal laws is you have to have police. Universal laws written by God. You have to have police. So the term defund the police to me is immoral. Train the police. Add psychologists to the police. Uh, have certain police, you know, hierarchy. They should become social workers as well as police. I'm in. Right, I, I, you know, in San Diego they have this um, um, a, a, a division of of the police force that's called PERT, and PERT stands for Pediatric Emergency, a uh, Psychological Emergency Re Response Team. Not pediatric, right? If someone's having a mental breakdown and they're screaming and breaking things, they don't need handcuffs. What they do need is therapists. So here you have special police force that is trained and helps people not commit suicide, helps people calm people down, take them to a convince them that the institution right now of 72 hour watch is the best thing for you that's what I think should be done um, so protect morality that would be the second thing that, that the way this ark was made by God and, and, and by the way and also just added to that to that the ark was placed in the inner sanctum inner of the inner Right, you could, there was there wasn't multiple doorways to get to this inner sanctum, one doorway, one and one only. The holy temple had multiple entrances. The courtyard inside the holy temple, multiple entrances. The holies, the, there were entrances, and it was large. The holies of holies, the inner sanctum, there was only one way in. Right, because. It's 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 not to be toyed with, not to be fooled with. You gotta respect it, look at it, open it, but 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 you gotta be careful. It has to morality has be, has to be protected at all costs. I think we also learn another incredible, to me, and fascinating lesson is that in the ark. There were the full set of tablets. There was also the broken set of tablets. And they were both in the ark equally. You know, there are people out there, 
and at times present company included, there are people out there who are broken, just broken, broken people. They've had a hard life. They've had a hard existence. They, they, they've, 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 um, you know, they, they, they've spent the last decade of their life fighting so many different battles on all fronts. Right? Are, are they any less human than you? Are they any less important than you? Because their, their chips are down, it, it doesn't make them not a member of society. The broken tablets, the fixed tablets, were in the same box. We didn't take the broken tablets and discard them. Once Moshe broke them, he picked them up every shard and he kissed them. And he almost like apologized that he had to do what he had to do to save the lives. And, and, and he placed them gently in the ark. And then he went up to the mountain and got the other set and placed them gently next to them. Right? There's no hierarchy here. There isn't. We're all human beings. You know, the recent con controversy, I was about to say controversy. Um, that's my British roots coming up. But, but um, the recent controversy with Whoopi Goldberg, race, 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 race. It's all a construct. It's man-made. There's, there's one race, and it's the human race. Ultimately, it's one race. There's a human race. We have different parts of the human race. And included in different parts of the human race, there are lucky parts of the human race, unlucky parts of the human race, chips down, chips up, fortunate, unfortunate, a lot of muzzle, little muzzle. Um, they, uh, people can create their own muzzle. It is, but, but we're all part of the human race. We're all part and parcel. You know, as 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 you hear so often from religious people, non-Jewish religious people. We're all God's children. And that's correct, right? We're part of the human race, so they're broken. They still belong in society. Hitler decided that, 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 that uh, if somebody is, is mentally unhinged, somebody is autistic or somebody's mentally retarded, you know, we, we don't use that term too often anymore, gotta be killed. Why? Because they're broken. Gypsies, they're broken. Homosexuals, they're broken, right? Jews, inferior. The, the Jewish attitude, Moses' attitude, they get placed in the ark side by side. Not up and down, but side by side. And it's for that reason that it's placed side by side is in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the center that I'm fortunate to be the rabbi for many years now, going on three decades. So it's an orthodox temple. Men and women do not sit together. The charter is orthodox. The people that come, not necessarily orthodox, but the charter is orthodox. I don't place men in the front, women in the back. Men in the main floor, women on the balcony. I don't do that. I place them side by side. Equal vision, equal. My, my attention is equal on both sides because I don't believe one side is more superior to the next. I don't believe men get the, you know, the, get all my intention during a prayer service and women poo poo. Um, I don't believe that for a second. Not not for one second. So the way I designed it, and it was, it was, you know, sitting down with the architect was, this is how I want it. And the fact that aesthetically, the architect said it could be much nicer if we did it another way. I said, I don't care about nice, I care about feelings. If you can make feelings and make it as nice as you can. But but include the sensitivities. Um, um, so, um, yeah, as far as, as far the Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, so, the, the, um, the next thing, the next thing I think should be, that we should discuss, is what was on top of the ark. So the top of the ark was a solid gold piece, huge piece of gold, 
right? Um, and it was to be, it was basically, they, they, they had to take a knife or a, I don't know how you cut and carve gold. They had to carve it with a carving knife or whatever to the, to the shape of two cherubs, a boy and a girl, angelic face, young, with wings. It's almost like, I'm the, the, you know, that's where we get, by the way, the, 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 the concept of angels from. They, they got it from us. But angelic looking with wings and the wings are touching. So, so, um, and it, and it was made out of solid gold. They didn't make these statues and then solder them, connect them. You know, I don't know solder. To me, I would have crazy glued it. I don't know anything about soldering. But, um, I would have used, you know, a lot of tape. Um, but you, they saw, it was one piece. And the Torah calls it miksha. It was one piece. It had to be more one piece. Well, guess what? Miksha comes from the word kasha. It's difficult. Raising kids is difficult. Raising kids is, is, is incredibly difficult. You know, I, 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 I wrote a book and part of it, 30 pages of this book is dedicated to parenting challenges, which is just tip of the iceberg. But um, so raising kids, uh, raising kids, raising kids, raising kids is extremely difficult. And the Torah test testifies, kasha, miksha. It's, 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 it's incredibly difficult to raise kids. Incredibly, incredibly difficult. However, your best shot is to keep them connected to the Torah. So this piece completed the box where the, where the, where the Torah was and the Ten Commandments were. If you keep them connected, you'll have the best shot. Keep them morally correct, proper values, priorities. Then it will be easier. You may have your struggles, but they'll, they'll be all right in the end. So that's the concept of, of, of mixture. It's hard, but there are ways to do it. It's not foolproof. I always say it's not foolproof because, hey, Abraham, patriarch of all patriarchs, had a terror hooligan called Ishmael. Even worse, Jacob and Isaac. I'm sorry, Isaac and Rebecca had Jacob and Esau, twins. One was a terror. The other one was a saint. I don't know if we have saints in Judaism, but you know, you get what you get my drift. Um, so, so it, it was, it was it, nothing's foolproof. Nothing's foolproof. But the best way is, is to teach them the right from wrong. You know, I, I, I write about it, I write about this that if a teacher calls home, the principal calls the parents. And, and complain about the kid. Your kid was a hooligan today. Your kid cheated. You did this. Take it seriously. Don't don't um, don't tell the teacher. Don't tell the principal. Oh, okay. Thank you for your call. And you know immediately say, hey, kid. Don't let them catch you cheating again. That's that's Im immoral. Don't do that. Rather say, you're gonna get punished. I'm not sure what. There's consequences to your actions. Okay, Robert? Okay, Julia? Consequences. It's not so... You cannot cheat. You hit somebody? Oh my goodness. Right? And definitely don't tell the kid. Yep, you're right. Your teacher's a nut job. The principal's off. No, 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 no. Respect, authority, as we said earlier. So you got to get keep them connected, grounded to morality, values, priorities, etc. Interesting to note in the Torah there are two places and only two places where it mentions the word keruvim or cherubs. Two places. One is what we're talking about this angelic being connected to the Torah, you know, with with um, with wings, 
always ascending higher and higher, etc. Um, the other place is a fascinating comment about cherubs. It's all the way in Genesis with the story of Adam and Eve. Famous story, Adam and Eve, God told them, don't eat from the forbidden fruit. And they say, you know, I, I don't give a fig, pardon the pun. And they ate the fig, or they, it wasn't an apple. Uh, they ate the grape, whatever it was, fig, apple. And they ate it. And God said, you, you defied me. I told you, I gave you one thing and one thing only. And you defied me. And there are classes, by the way, um, about Genesis. So there's a whole course on Genesis if, you, if you're interested on the High Academy. Highcenter.com forward slash academy. They, God said, the consequences to your actions. Get out. Until now I've fed you, I've clothed you, I've taken care of you. But now, a little bit of tough love. Get out. Right? Out. And he kicked them out of the Garden of Eden and says, now you're going to have to fend for yourself. Now you're going to have to really work hard. Until now, you're on the payroll. From now on, you're going to have to produce. And that's the only way you'll learn. Because I gave you one commandment, one request, and you couldn't listen. You spot brats. Out. And then the Torah says that God placed cherubs, keruvim, with swords, oscillating swords, to make sure Adam and Eve do not sneak back into the Garden of Eden. That's the only other time cherubs are mentioned. To me, it is, the, it is so obvious of what this is teaching us. You parents, me as a parent, all parents, grandparents, teachers and principals as well, we can rear two types of children. It's up to us. They could be Keruvim, cherubs, connected to the Torah, values, priorities, and, and morals. Or you could have cherubs, Keruvim, who have swords, and, and they're brutes, they're thugs, and, and um, they are the, 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 the oscillating, their sword is oscillating. They are, their morals and values are oscillating. Things are changing. This is good now, this is not good now. This is, uh, you know, yeah, we like this value, no, we don't like this value. And, and they, just, they just change values on a whim. And that leads them to being bodybuilders, spiritually, not physically. Um, Jews are not bodybuilders, for the most part. Um, the, it leads them to, to, to just be, be you know, people who, who are not connected to the Torah. They're muscle. They're, they're, they, they, they don't they don't think with hair, they think with with the fist. And that's not a good that's not a good way to bring up a kid. So essentially we have a choice. Essentially we have a choice. Which cherub do you want to bring up? All kids are born cherubs. That's why the face is young. All kids are born cherubs. How are you gonna inculcate them? What are you going to do to assure that they have values or they have a switchblade and they are thugs in terms of morality? And the Torah is making it clear. It can go either way. They have the potential to be either because we have free will. Of course, the best scenario is connecting to the Torah. Now, connecting to the Torah is not all rosy. You can't do everything you want. You have to respect the laws, laws of Torah, laws of the land. You can't take something that doesn't belong to you. It's much easier to be able to go into CVS and, and, and pick up something that doesn't belong to you and not pay for it. Much easier life. 
and forking over cash or your debit card or your credit card right it's much easier just to go to TJ Maxx and just steal I, I, by the way I believe in California you can so I, I, maybe I'm gonna go next week because I need a new suit um, but but it's much easier to, to, to just live your life ruleless and and with with no with no morals of values really easy it's I don't believe it's, it's the way to go I don't believe it's ultimately you're gonna feel empty but um, so so connecting them to values priorities and, and value and, and, and morals is, is, is yes is more of a difficult path but it assures a better product in the end it assures that if you do that they'll be solid gold they, they will be gold gold in a kinder you'll get nachas from them yes they had to they had to, they had to um, sacrifice certain things and they had to go to school my goodness um, and they had to if they got detention you had to enforce it and agree with the teacher but the outcome just like these cherubs they'll be gold in a kinder they'll give you a lot of nachas a lot of joy and and um, and, and they'll, they'll, they will have noble steadfast character and that's all we want as well as a little bit of health and a few shekels please feel free to share this class if you enjoyed it if you didn't enjoy it, I guess delete it but um, feel free to, to share this class you can find hundreds of, of classes from the Chai Academy and um, at the thechaicenter.com forward slash academy Spotify Chai Academy YouTube the Chai Academy Anchor the Chai Academy there's no shortage of where you can see these classes please share personal favor to, to, to me because I believe society needs to hear certain things. God bless. Any questions? Please feel free to ask. Rabbi at the High Center. Any feedback? Rabbi at the High Center.com. Um, or here on the comments here. Be well.